All right, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday. Finally made it through the uh, work week there. The weekend is definitely upon us. Going to be a nice one out here in California, uh, upper 80s, and then we even got some upper 70s coming up here tomorrow. So things look like a beautiful weekend out here. We'll check out the rest of the country here at the end of this update video. Latest quake shows a 2.3 into the Alaska area. I want to start off here with the Iceland latest update here from the Icelandic Met Office stating that uh, the continued magma accumulation underneath the surface here um, continues quite uh, rapidly at about 18 million cubic meters of magma now has been accumulated into the magma reservoir area since about March 16th so things are continuing to increase not for sure how much longer this area will be able to withstand the pressure below uh, before we see another eruption there at the surface areas now of course the eruption mentioned here the wording is that the activity will be relatively short in terms of the earthquake elevated earthquake activity just prior to the fissure activity opening up there at the surface levels uh, looks like um, they're still believing that the latest the area that we'll see the eruption is going to be around uh, the crater area a similar to where we've seen our most recent eruptive event take place here in the craters but uh, we'll continue to watch that here is the latest chart here at about 18 kill uh, 18 million cubic meters of magma in the red line we have not hit the eruption yet that will be in a star red star these are all comparable events uh, over the last few months here since um, uh, October 2023 when we've seen the highest one of the highest readings up here uh, that was actually back in uh, looks like November here last year so we're at the level we surpassed the level of previous inflated events here across the Iceland area so things should be kicking up fairly soon again I don't know how much further uh, or longer we'll be able to see this continue there without an eruption at the surface or some type of magma displacement uh, latest activity here on the earthquake th uh, earthquake map for the Iceland area shows uh, not a whole lot today. Only about 19 earthquakes. Uh, a little 2.2 here around the craters area. That one's uh, somewhat deep though, about 4 kilometers or so. Really no major swarming going on, but again, just prior to any eruptive event, we'll notice hundreds of earthquakes key up in a, in a confined area. Uh, and then from there, we'll know exactly where this eruptive event's going to take place there across Iceland. But for now, uh, it's just kind of steady. Steady inflation and earthquake activity, really not all that elevated. All right, looking at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity here on the map. The largest one today so far looks to be a 5.1, not a big one at all. Fairly shallow here, just north of the Solomon Sea, north of Papua New Guinea. Uh, that's on a uh, just off the plate boundary here. This area does see some earthquake activity uh, Historical data shows us this this map uh, But not quite as active as regions down here south along the plate boundary. So this Sporadic activity away from the plate boundary in this region here tells me that things are uh, a little bit amplified out here across this region uh, There is a, a, a subduction zone that extends right here I don't know if it's listed on the map, but uh, you guys can see the uh, oceanic trench here where that subduction zone exists we'll continue to keep an eye on this area following this kind of an odd earthquake that took place a couple hours ago and by the way live stream is up and running just uh looks like it went down like literally about half an hour or so ago didn't even notice it until i went to come in here and do the uh the live stream or the uh update noticed it was down one little lonesome earthquake here right off the San Andreas Fault in the hazard zone. This is, again, just kind of an area I watch pretty closely for any type of swarming that would tell me that things are, uh, you know, about ready to unzip here across the San Andreas Fault. Just a little earthquake, a little point eight, but uh, nothing for now as far as any large scale movement goes. A handful of smaller quakes up and down the plate boundary. Uh, a look at the 2.5 and above map shows a handful of earthquakes here today. Mostly uh, in northern central California area. Latest one at 2.8 against the uh, Sierra Nevada mountains here, the west side. 
east side of the valley, west side of the uh, Sierra Nevadas. Aside from that, really uh, no major unusual swarms going on there across the west coast for now. Pacific Northwest, this activity here from yesterday, really not a big deal up there for now. Across the rest of the country, big time severe weather threats out here again. Again, we'll cover that in a little bit. New Jersey, seeing a little 2.9 earthquake there, shaking things up just after midnight. Um, it was felt by quite a few folks out there. Of course, this area has been rocking and rolling uh, with earthquake activity here recently. And um, in the last seven days, though, I would say that's the biggest one I think we've seen as far as aftershock activity goes. Last 30 days, of course, this doesn't cover all of the movement that we've seen. Uh, most of that activity was in early April, so we're in almost late May right now. 30 days doesn't cover that uh, time period, but there's quite a bit of earthquake activity that ramped up. But this 2.9 looks to be, well, it matches this other 2.9 back in uh, late April. But uh, one of the more stronger aftershocks here in those sequence of earthquakes. So, of course, we'll continue to watch that. Things could obviously stir back up out here. It is in a major hazard zone in terms of, you know, the potential uh, for some larger quake activity. Maybe not quite as much as, you know, the New Madrid seismic zone or down here in the Carolinas, but it does have its uh, fault systems up here just north of New York that uh, is capable of producing some bigger quakes than what we've seen down there in New Jersey. All right, Puerto Rico area. I was watching this little swarming stirring up last night. Looks like we had a couple more just after midnight, 3.7 and 3.4. But aside from that, things are a little bit less active here across the area of Puerto Rico. Uh, South America region, let's check out the Earthquake 3D Globe for that. A little quiet down there as well. Obviously some smaller quakes, but nothing big going on there in the South America area. Same for the Middle America Trench, just getting some movement up and down that area. Looks like we've seen a, a 4.5 into the Aleutian Trench. Let's see when that was. Uh, just after midnight, it looks like. Coral Kamachaka, way over here. Another deep earthquake from yesterday. Really no subsequent activity upstream, but we'll continue to watch that. Uh, let's see what we got here for New Zealand. Not a whole lot down here across New Zealand for now. Over the last couple days, this area has been relatively quiet in terms of, you know, maximum movement. Most of the activity today has, uh, seems like it's spread out and about wide and far. A little bit of activity down in Australia. But one uh, five-pointer way up north here. That's going to be way into the Russia region. 11 kilometers deep for this one into the... Uh, this little mountain range here. Uh, got a 4.7 stern up this morning, it looks like, into the African area, African continent, um, in the Republic of the Congo, it looks like, for a 4.7. Let's see here. Another smaller quake down south as well, towards the South Africa area. Uh, Region around Italy looks like we're starting to swarm again. Not around that volcano, but more southward um, near the boot. Everyone, obviously an easy feature to spot here. Is it looks like a leg and a boot here for Italy. Uh, I remember that as a kid, the teacher telling me this is what you look for, the leg and the boot out here for, for a easy recognition of where Italy is on the map. But this earthquake four-pointer just off the plate boundary not seeing any further elevated activity out here across the uh, uh, that volcano area here. Let me double check here from the EMSC model for this region. Yeah, it doesn't look like things turned up out here. Uh, most of the movement closer to the plate boundary today as noted on that uh, earthquake down here near the uh, Ionian Sea. All right, the Atlantic Ocean, fairly quiet. We'll continue to watch that, though, because when things get elevated and active out here across the mid and northern Atlantic, that's the time to watch for Iceland really starting to stir up out there. So I think we'll have one more push of some uh, interesting activity out here before we see the eruption take place. Big Island of Hawaii, 
Looks like a little spotty activity overnight. Some twos out there. Double check the most recent update here from the USGS where the volcano still sits at a yellow and advisory. Latest update was put out uh, yesterday. Really not a whole lot of change overnight, at least according to the data. Uh, steady as, steady as, uh, I, don't, I don't know what, but it's just a steady inflation event here in the last two days. You can see that on the last week, just really crazy looking. I mean, there's really no differences in this elevated movement at the time, which is inflation. Looks a little odd. But uh, either way, we'll continue to go up here, follow that cycle until we see another displacement of magma somewhere or an eruption take place around the Kilauea Volcano Summit area, maybe even the upper East Rift Zone, because we are up there, definitely uh, at the highest level seen since the 2018 eruption there across the big island of Hawaii. All right, space weather activity today. We got a little glancing look or a little peak over here. We can see that sunspot active, that active sunspot region here um, that's coming around the northeastern limb. Right now, it's hard to tell with the uh, magnetic structure up here. It does look uh, like it's got a little bit of uh, different polarities within that sunspot, but probably won't be able to get a better view of it here until maybe later tonight. Uh, but it does look like there's some features over there on the UV ray here, this image. Uh, that might tell us that this thing's going to be uh, producing active flaring. But uh, for now, we'll just continue to keep an eye on that. Not named. Uh, it was former Sunspot 3663. This should be named... Um, I wonder if they named it already. 3690? Maybe they have already. Kind of looks like they threw up a name already uh, for 3690. I wonder if it's maybe this one they're pointing out. This one looks separate from this area back here. So we'll watch it in the coming days here. See how active this sunspot region is uh, for us here on Earth. Not a whole lot of Earth-facing side sunspots that are noteworthy in terms of uh, potential flaring. It all looks uh, fairly stable. All the flaring activity in the last 24 hours. Uh, a couple M flare from yesterday, but we're back down into the low C flare category here overnight and this morning no major roars in the forecast for now folks hopefully we can get that to change but uh, things look yeah quite green on the board but that means quite quiet in the sky for auroras all right storm prediction center out here today an enhanced risk across areas of oklahoma texas and up, up into the uh, missouri area now, we do have a 5% chance for tornado activity up here and 2% in the green. No matter where you're at out here today, stay weather aware. It uh, looks like Chicago, Illinois is included in that. Some wind and some big-time hail appears to be the main threat out here today. Uh, day two, a little bit more serious risk as we head into Saturday when everyone's at home. This is your typical zone, typical tornado alley region that sees uh, these high risk days is not not a high risk but this is definitely somewhat of a serious event for tomorrow as we look at a huge area of tornado potential out here today or tomorrow excuse me and uh that's a big deal these guys have been dealing with quite a bit of tornadic activity large super big stovepipe looking tornadoes uh those things are beautiful if they're out in the open field somewhere but man can they do some damage and tomorrow is the day to stay weather aware because that could be a repeat cycle here of tornadic events that we've seen here recently. That's a pretty serious deal. Uh, looks like that includes Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Wichita, Kansas, Norman, Oklahoma, and Wichita Falls down here into the Texas area. So it's a big time deal. Wind, hail threats as well. It's just about as bad as you can get in terms of severe weather forecasting um, potential that they could ramp this up to a high risk. We'll see. But uh, right now, this is still pretty serious. Don't take tomorrow lightly uh, at all. And today as well. You know, it's uh, any type of severe weather event out there can turn quite deadly under the right conditions. And that's what these guys are forecasting uh, for tomorrow in extreme 
potential tornado outbreak out here in Oklahoma, Kansas, and that does include portions of western Missouri out here and even a little bit into Arkansas. So it doesn't matter where you're at. If you're within this green zone, this huge looking, uh, I don't know, maybe a pepper, pepper looking uh, shape, take heed because tomorrow's a big day for severe weather. We'll cover this again tonight, see if they uh, uh, revise any of this forecasting, but it does look like it could be a serious event. Let me check out the... Um, I'm to check out some tor tornado parameters out here <clears throat> across the area. Um... This should cover it. So tomorrow, roughly about, I think it's going to be late afternoon. There's definitely going to be tornado risk out here, big time. This is just one weather model showing the uh, highest areas of tornadic potential, and it's just going to be a broad scale event out here. So we'll cover that. I don't want to go into too many of these uh, long forecast trends, but yeah, it could definitely be some big time strong tornadoes out there tomorrow. And got to watch out for this because uh, I could do some big time damage out there. I hate seeing the damage done by tornadoes. They're absolutely beautiful, uh, you know, with respect to the weather and, you know, how they're formed and the whole dynamics of it. But they do quite a bit of damage, unfortunately. All right. Uh, I think that's about it, folks, here. That's all I got for right now. I got uh, last day, goodness, last day of the uh, spring semester today for me. After that, get a little break through the summer, then we'll fire it back up in the fall. But, man, it's... Uh, it's been a long semester out here. Been racking my brain, and today's the last day. I got a few things I got to do today, and then that's it. Then I got some freedom. Seismograph stations out here, pretty quiet. A couple spikes there on Petrolia, Northern California, but those are very small, very small spikes on that station. Aside from that, have yourself a good Friday, and we'll catch you guys back out here for the Friday night update a little bit later on this evening, folks. Take care and stay safe out there. Stay weather aware. We'll see you guys soon.